Hi everyone, in this video I will review my recently completed project. I hope you will like it and find it useful. Now the first thing, let's go over our layers. On my default layer it's only cameras as always, but they are hidden for now and if we go to the display panel you can see that all of my cameras are hidden, also my lights are hidden too. Then let's open the walls and for the walls we have two meshes which is the inner layer and an outer layer. So the inner layer is slightly above the ground, that's it for the walls. Then let's unhide the floor layer. And again, for this project, I didn't use any floor generator or anything. I just used the texture and it's just a editable spline with some shell modifier applied on it. Now let's unhide our doors and windows layer. So this is just a regular model of the door, which I downloaded from the internet. I use the same door everywhere in all the project. Here we have the windows, which I made using my favorite plugin for windows, UPVC window generator. And as for the blinds, I just downloaded the model from the internet and I modified it a little bit so that it's covering all the windows. Now let's open the layer for the dining area. Again, uh, another model that I just downloaded. Now there is no really need to model everything from scratch. I have some accessories here and the chandelier. Then let's open the kitchen layer. For the kitchen I usually model it myself because it's really hard to find the exact model that you need and very simple modeling. I started with editable poly, some inset, then added some shell and uh, added some chamfers on top and this is how the kitchen modeling looks. Nothing difficult, very simple. For the rest I just used the downloaded models like chairs, some accessories, the tap and the sink. And now let's unhide the living room area. For the living room I also used the downloaded 3D model of the sofa that I found on the internet. A very nice rug, table, everything was downloaded from the internet except for this TV wall that I had to model myself because I couldn't find anything on the internet similar to what I needed. And now let's unhide the layer for hall with a mirror I modeled myself because I couldn't find the exact same model and the downloaded model of the poof. I have separate layer for the bedroom, it's just a bed with a rug, also all the models here are downloaded except for the wall panels. I have a separated layer for the workspace with some downloaded accessories and, and again the panel that I modeled myself. And I have a separate layer for the bathroom and for the ceiling. So this is how it looks, the project, the whole project and the whole scene. The scene has a total of 9 million polygons, which is not that much for this type of scene. And as you can see, everything looks very clean and neat, no weird topology or anything else. And this is how I like to keep my scenes. By the way, you can download this 3D scene and many more in my Patreon account. The link will be provided in the video description. And once I was done with the modeling, I set up my cameras. Let's now go to the display tab and let's unhide all the cameras that we have in the scene. And if I press C on my keyboard, you can see I have a bunch of cameras here, but I will talk only about a few of them. So let's select the horizontal camera. And if I press Shift plus F, it will show us the exact view that we will have from the cameras. Now let's select the camera, go here and select the camera. And here you can see all the settings of my camera. For this horizontal camera, I didn't use any target. The main settings here are the field of view. The more the value is, the wider is the length of the camera. Then I have an automatical vertical tilt. If it's turned off, you can see our perspective is being distorted. We don't want that. And I also have a camera clipping, which means that it lets us cut through the wall. If I disable it, you can see that we see the back of the wall, but with enabling it, it lets us cut through the walls. And that's all the settings that we have for the camera. And other cameras are pretty much the same, just different field of view and a different environment clipping value. After I was done with the camera, I moved on to the lighting. And before setting up the light, I turned on my material override. That means that all the materials will be a basic Corona physical material, except for the glass and light materials. And for the light, I just wanted something very neutral, something very calm and bright. 
and you will be surprised but I ended up just using a simple plain white color as you can see here this is my scene environment and I just use the white color and sometimes you don't need to overcomplicate things if it looks good on the render and it works for you I mean why not using it so I just use the plain white color and that's how the render looked without any materials now let's talk about the light sources. So in the dining area I have one light, it's just a cylindrical corona light. The intensity is set to lumen 500 and the Kelvin temperature is set to 4000 which gives it a warm color. All the other parameters are set to default. Then I have another light source which is this one. This light stands behind the kitchen cabinet and it's also the same. The intensity is 500 lumen and the Kelvin temperature is 4000. And I also have a light source in the TV stand. It's pretty much almost the same. The only difference is the size of it and the shape but it's just two lights. One is facing down, another is facing up and the intensity is also 500 lumen and the temperature is 4000. I also have a spotlights here. But for the spotlights I used Corona light material rather than normal Corona light because it was more convenient and I just applied the Corona light material to the geometry and that was way easier. Then I opened my settings and I just pressed setup light mix. This will set up all the lights automatically. You just have to name them correctly and that's how it's gonna look like. Here you can see my light mix. On the right side I have many lights, but let's turn on the dining pendant light. I have kitchen stand, this is this light. I didn't really need and use the kitchen and uh, living room light. And I just slightly changed the color because I wanted to make them a little bit warmer. And this was the final result for the lighting. Now let's talk about the materials. Most of the models come with their own material and most of the time they're good, but sometimes you still need to adjust something. There is not too many materials that I want to go through because most of the materials are pretty easy. Let's take a look at the floor material. Now it's just a simple texture, some color correction to change the color. And the texture is a concrete material and I have a color correction for the glossiness and the base bump and and the material is very easy to create. Now let's see what the marble material looks like. For the marble I just used the diffuse texture and most of the other parameters I left on default. Now let's take a look at the fabric material of the sofa. So we can see that here we have a basic fabric texture, then we have an output map which is also another version of the color correct. It just doesn't have too many options than color comparing to color correct. Then we have a falloff map which makes the material look like a fabric where on the edge it looks more soft and closer to the middle it looks more rough. Then a color correct, a mix amount. The mix amount is just a basic dirt map that makes it look uneven. Some parts are darker, some parts are lighter, something similar to velvet. Another color correct and just a grayscale version of this same texture for a bump. Very easy material, but it looks really nice. For the cabinets, let's choose the material of the cabinets. It's also a simple material, just a Corona color. And all the parameters are set to default. Just adjusted the roughness and that's it. And that's it for the materials. As you can see, all the materials are very simple, but at the same time, they all look pretty nice. And after adjusting everything to my likings, I just rendered all the images in 4K and this is how the final result looks like. I did a little bit of post-production in Photoshop and that's it. You can find this scene and many others in my Patreon account. So thank you for watching, please subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time.